uh, from the opportunities he had been given in other companies he had worked for. So WWE have been no strangers to ruining these TNA wrestlers who you remember from years ago. And it's got to get people really depressed, especially uh, these AJ Styles fans out there who will riot if nothing happens for AJ Styles. And I will go on record for saying uh, that AJ Styles fans will probably riot and probably will uh, get away with having a right to riot because they believe he deserves something better for his career and ultimately far greater uh, than that, whether it be a Money in the Bank briefcase, a chance at the championship, whatever way uh, it comes the way of AJ Styles. I would imagine there were a lot of people when AJ Styles came out at number two or three of this year's Royal Rumble who believed that AJ Styles had a chance of going the distance, lasting over a half an hour in the Royal Rumble match and almost going the distance to win the thing because it came down uh, to AJ Styles and several other wrestlers like Triple H, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose before the match was cut down to Triple H and Dean Ambrose and the place realized uh, that Dean Ambrose had a chance of going all the way and winning the Royal Rumble, the place exploded as it would have for AJ Styles to give him the same opportunity. Maybe next year or the year after, probably within the next two years, he'll have a better chance of winning the Royal Rumble. But I'm really looking forward to finding out what they're going to be doing uh, with AJ Styles in the long run because there's so much unpredictability in this that goes with this character, and there's so much of an opportunity here to create. You know, putting him in a program with The Miz is one way of creating him, but there's other ways of creating him, too. You know, putting him in the ring with other people that he's never had the chance uh, to work with before, even people he's had a history with uh, from other wrestling companies, which obviously won't be mentioned, and I hate that to death, you know, how they don't mention the other accomplishments of wrestlers, you know, outside of WWE. They'll only mention the things they did for World Championship Wrestling because they have to when you're talking about a legend like Sting or what they did for a company like ECW. They'll never mention uh, TNA Wrestling and how many times AJ Styles was champion in that company, the matches he had uh, with Abyss, Kurt Angle, Jeff Jarrett. I mean, he had those matches, and they were incredible uh, matches in TNA Wrestling, matches that deserved to be uh, you know, mentioned and recognized because they were so great. They really were what the tagline is suggesting for AJ Styles. They were phenomenal. And when he called himself the Prince of Phenomenal, when he had that whole dispute with Kurt Angle and Karen Angle, and there was somewhat of a romance angle going on, uh, being between AJ Styles and Karen Angle that existed uh, for a while, I also enjoyed that. But, you know, you throw yourself back to the very first TNA Impact match that was on Spike TV, AJ Styles was in that match. He was the recipient of a lot of awards uh, for TNA Wrestling, and he had so many opportunities to compete against so many big names. And that's what, you know, I remember AJ Styles for having done. I remember the Ultimate X matches, Ultimate X 1 and 2. You know, they had a classic uh, in the first match between AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, and Samoa Joe, and it was that good. They had to have a second and probably even a third, but I can't remember. But the thing was, uh, the series of matches, just the exchange between AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels, whom I have interviewed before, uh, is phenomenal. And I think that, you know, TNA Wrestling did a really great job putting these wrestlers out there and really throwing them in our faces. Yeah, they may not have told us who to love as much as what WWE did, but we made the choice uh, to get into someone like AJ Styles, and we're making the choice to still follow AJ Styles and really worship uh, the ground he's walking on with a lot of wrestling fans, you know, really following this cult of AJ Styles fans. He could be their answer to CM Punk, just as I believe Seth Rollins was their answer uh, to a departing CM Punk. He could really uh, be the next CM Punk or the next Daniel Bryan if given that opportunity, maybe not in the way of a leader of a yes movement, but a leader of a cult of fans who are not going to go anywhere or turn on AJ Styles anytime soon. Could I see AJ Styles as a heel? Yeah, we've seen him before in TNA Wrestling as a heel. He still has fans who carried on with AJ Styles, you know, went wherever AJ Styles went. We could see that happen in WWE because of the lack of respect from wrestling fans that AJ Styles feels he is owed. Uh, obviously, he is owed that respect, and obviously wrestling fans realizing that uh, receiving AJ Styles in an absolutely phenomenal way don't mean uh, to keep going back to that catchphrase, but I mean, you know, in a program with Christian Jericho, it's really a miscarriage of justice in the words of Gorilla Monsoon, you know, to see this be happening for AJ Styles when he should be feuding with the likes of Triple H for uh, that championship. How about this? You know, Sting versus Triple H is one way of looking at WrestleMania, even Sting versus Triple H too. Uh, but another way of looking at it could be AJ Styles versus Triple H, which would be for the first time ever, and it could be for the championship, either in the way of the Money in the Bank briefcase, giving him that chance or some other way it could come the way of AJ Styles, because opportunity is often presented in WWE. It's up to that person the opportunity is presented to, whether or not they seize that opportunity, and AJ Styles could be one of the first ones to do that in a really long time, in the way of a CM Punk, a Seth Rollins, and many others uh, that 
that we have seen. You know, I'm really happy that AJ Styles really was never a part of NXT. He kind of just showed up. The place exploded when AJ Styles came out and was in the Royal Rumble match, revealed that. You know, he had this new look, which a lot of people uh, were blown away by. As I mentioned here earlier, you know, not really into things like Y2 AJ. I think that's kind of weird. Uh, not really into the new look of AJ Styles. I'd rather, uh, you know, like the brush cut of AJ Styles to return in the old ring attire to really throw me back to my years. Uh, watching TNA Wrestling, which I don't do enough of these days. You know, there are still incredible wrestlers in TNA Wrestling. Don't get me wrong with the status of TNA Wrestling, along with the state of it, and just how we don't have the names like Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles anymore. You know, that's kind of turned me away uh, from TNA Wrestling. You know, watching the likes of people like yeah, Desmond Wolf and people like that. You know, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Jeff Jarrett in their hey years. Uh, that, to me, was what TNA Wrestling was really built on, and that's what, you know, the house of TNA Wrestling is really defined as, you know, an opportunistic place uh, for wrestlers who were never given that opportunity. So I've kind of turned away and shied away uh, from TNA Wrestling and what it was. You know, I don't watch enough of the product, and I'll openly admit to that, and I'm probably going to be watching more of WWE because of Samoa Joe and AJ Styles finally making their debuts, and Samoa Joe, who still has to make his WWE debut, because seeing them on NXT is one way of looking at it and saying, hey, they're already a part of WWE. That's basically considered being a part of WWE, but to go from NXT, you know, performing in front of probably a couple of thousands of people, uh, to thousands of people every week, thousands and thousands, I should say, of people every week on Monday Night Raw is a total different ball game, and that's where AJ Styles and Samoa Joe are really going to have to present themselves in a way they never have presented themselves before, and that's what makes this so fun and very unpredictable and, dare I say, phenomenal for the AJ Styles fans out there who do exist. AJ Styles has arrived. This is the headline I've chosen to use. You can get in on the conversation. There you see the headline in the graphic by leaving it for me in the comments of this video. It's Jonathan Clark 22. That's my YouTube channel URL. You can let me know if you have a thought on AJ Styles debuting. You can also tweet me that thought on Twitter at Jonathan Clark one and on my Facebook page at HEW Entertainment on my Google Plus fan page at the same HEW Entertainment and get in on my conversation circle and just my general conversation on AJ Styles, which is really blowing up on social media, the support uh, that AJ Styles has received, you know, the hashtags of Y2J J and AJ, you know, have really blown up on Twitter. And just the tweets of people, you know, who are really saying, you know, they really enjoy seeing AJ Styles. There is something that I think cannot go uh, without any recognition. Because when you see the conversation at all-time highs uh, happening throughout social media, it really is a testament to how far these wrestlers have come and what kind of legacy uh, they really have. You can't really help but respect someone like an AJ Styles who's really on the distance and could be there for a really long time. I see about 10 years out of someone like AJ Styles as long as you keep presenting him with opportunities. You know, probably one to two years will be a crying shame of justice for AJ Styles because he's someone who you can really get a number of years out of and really enjoy watching. And it would really be a travesty of justice if AJ Styles only lasted one or two years after a few matches with Chris Jericho here and there with The Miz and then he was never Intercontinental or U.S. Champion. He would be the perfect Intercontinental or U.S. Champion, by the way, in this generation, you know, especially when you're trying to reintroduce uh, wrestlers like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe all the time. If it was never a WWE Champion, probably an Intercontinental Champion who could hold that title uh, the period of time of maybe six through eight months, that would be awesome. Maybe not even a year, but even if six to eight months was where AJ Styles was, uh, as Intercontinental Champion or ended up, I would go for that. Uh, I just think that, you know, more of an opportunity needs to come his way. Not to say it eventually won't, but I mean, with the history of TNA wrestlers and their track record with WWE and how they've been ruined uh, in years prior, like Marcus Corvan, Chris Harris, countless others, uh, I think that, you know, it's definitely something that wrestling fans of the throwback era of TNA wrestling who remember TNA wrestling in the early thousands and the first few TNA impacts on Spike TV uh, with AJ Styles and the classic matches with Christopher Daniels, Kurt Angle, and Sting. I think that, you know, a lot of people know this ought to be true and, you know, it cannot go without being brought up or recognized. WWE are going to allude to the fact that they've ruined uh, TNA wrestlers. They'll always say, you know, we've given them opportunities, but they never seize that opportunity and that's why they are where they are today. And I think AJ Styles really is why he's there is because he's the first one to have seized 
uh, that opportunity in a really long time. And that's why I'm looking forward to a future reign, possibly, of him as the WWE Champion. Because any champion in the way of Roma Reigns or Triple H will be better than the champion that we have now. Even Dean Ambrose or Brock Lesnar again as champion. And I do agree with the fans who still say that Brock Lesnar should be WWE Champion and should have had the title rather than Triple H because he's COO and he can do what he wants. Here's your COO of the company coming out in a business suit after making a transition from the wrestling ring into the office and he's still competing and winning championships whether it be for a month or two months he's still putting himself over in big matches with Sting whose main event spot could have belonged to anyone in the way of The Undertaker or even the fucking Rock at WrestleMania and you had to have Sting versus Triple H so with putting people over like Triple H all the time any champion will be better than the champions we have seen and the champion that we have now and I don't think that I'm fur uh, from the truth or having said anything inaccurate uh, this week on the show when you're talking about the debut the incredible and phenomenal debut of AJ Styles which was nothing short of phenomenal I'm your host Jonathan Clark and I will talk to you again next week don't go anywhere. HEW Entertainment Radio will return with the latest news, music, interviews, discussion, and Jonathan Clark next. When something takes place in the world of professional wrestling, you know where to go. WrestleZone.com. WrestleZone.com. Covering all the latest breaking news daily. Interactive forums where you can chat with thousands of other wrestling fans. Exclusive editorials and audio features by some of today's top wrestling superstars. Exclusive video content, weekly polls, live play-by-play coverage of every WWE and TNA pay-per-view. And now, and now, featuring WrestleZone Radio, live, live, with news, in-depth discussions, debates, and interviews with wrestling's top stars, past, past, and present. present. When you think wrestling, think WrestleZone. WrestleZone.com He considers himself God's gift to wrestling, and millions of his faithful agree. With nearly four hours of footage and exclusive commentary and matches, this DVD chronicles Daniel's rise from Chicago's Windy City Wrestling to the Asylum in Nashville, and finally to the top of TNA. TNA Home Video presents Heaven Sent, Hell Bound, the best of Christopher Daniels. Available at most retailers and TNAWrestling.com. Hey you, you right there, the one listening to this show. While you're tuning into this broadcast or when you read the news on WrestleZone.com, are you forming opinions of it all? Or do you just agree with everything you see and hear? If you actually have some sort of afterthought, which, by the way, is normal. We want to know what it is. There are thousands of wrestling fans just like you that simply can't hold their thoughts in either. 